Hi, so continuing with the advanced spreadsheet lecture materials and week four sections um, 11, 12 and 13. 11 and 12 have been done before this and the final one in this week is the pivot table 13, section 13. So make sure you've got the right uh, work files again, week four, section 13 we're after and open the pivot tables one for me. And we're going to work through these three examples and I'm going to demonstrate some of the syllabus to you through these. So the first one, creating a pivot table, we open that up together. And pivot tables are great for um, showing lots of information in different ways. Obviously, you can do it in charts as well. I like the charts myself, but pivot tables are really good too. So pivot tables is found in the insert tab and right in the top um, left hand corner. Easily arrange and summarize complex data in a pivot table. OK, so that's what we're going to be doing. So if we click on the Create tab at the bottom of your workbook, and hopefully if I bring this down a little bit, you should be able to see why I've got things the way I have. So first of all, click in the Pivot Table data, click on the Insert tab and Pivot Table. We'll bring this down here. And what we've got is we've got a pivot table based upon the information that's been it's got a hash around it all the way down to the bottom, so that's fine. And we're going to pop it into the existing worksheet, and the location is going to be where I've made it easy and placed it in the I-10. Okay, so I've marked it out for you. So once we OK on this, we get this um, template for a pivot, pivot table and the pivot table fields in our survey ready to be dropped in to where they need to go. So I'm just going to bring this over slightly so you can see it. Notice how the pivot table disappeared. If I click back on here, the fields will come back in. Okay, so the pivot table pane can disappear once you go off, back on, and it's there. So what we're going to do is going to follow this. We're going to drag the town to the row labels. And we don't need to tick these. We can just drag and drop. We're going to drag, this is it, building now, the sex field to the column area. The town again to the values area. Because we're going to do a count of the town. Now it's come on count, probably because I've done this before. So if we go to the value field settings, it can be changed to something else. So if the uh, exam asks you, or in the real world you're doing your own, um, it asks you to do a particular um, function, then you would choose it here. But we're happy with count. And you can see that our, I just pop this out of the way, you can see our pivot table is there. When I jump on there, it comes back on. So at the moment, we've got um, a survey with just, let's just bring that in and in there. We can see that we've got two females in Bristol and no males. So if you're asked to sometimes update the table with information, for example, um, if I just find a Bristol female and change that to a male with an M, when I've done that and enter, it doesn't change on here. I have to update or refresh the pivot table in order to do that. So if you right click, you get the option to refresh. You also have these tabs at the top, You've got an analyze tab where you can find the refresh and a design tab as well. If you want a chart of your pivot table, you can click there and it will produce a chart that's not necessary for the exam just so you know the field list is off the field list is on okay another way of getting there so you've got everything you need in the exam to to do that so if we did refresh there then that female becomes one and the male becomes one okay if we're going to do anything with regard to the rows we can filter 
because we've used it in the rows area here so we could filter out particular towns and get the information for that okay and then back on if you work, work through here you can see things like um, I mean you can have a look for yourself but I've been messing around and in this one you can sort so in our main one here we can sort the data and the information of the grand total a particular way if we wanted to and that would change it like that or back to the other way okay so you can just click in there and do a sort if you're asked to so it's pretty straightforward the next area that we're going to cover in the syllabus for pivot tables is grouping so if we open up the grouping workbook And I've popped in another example of sorting, just to remind you that that's how you can do a sort. People think they can't in a pivot table, and you can. And also I've popped in a way of doing that filtering again, if you wanted to, to have a play with that. You can see here that that's your filtering. What we're going to concentrate on is this grouping. So uh, to ungroup this area, if I right clicked and did ungroup, it won't do anything. If I go to the... Um, Analyze tab and then group also won't do anything. But if I click on the group itself and right click and then group, they become ungrouped and back to just single uh, data. If I wanted to follow the question or the instruction down here, let's say it's in a test question, it wants me to define a time side group including Newcastle. Let's click on Newcastle, Control key, South Shields and timeless and it wants me to group all of those under a group name time site so right click and group there's the group on there so I just type in time side and it over types click in and there's my group okay so you could do this on a number of things you could put it into areas or regions so that's manual grouping and uh, there's another one there if you want to play with it. What I'd like to do though, before I finish this series, is have a look at a diagnostic example of uh, grouping. So the third one in the folder, we just open that up. So there's two areas in here I'd like to look at, the grouping and filter to hide selected items. So if you click in the dates and you click on group, So it's picked up all of the dates. If you can see down there, it's got 2006 all the way to 2008. And it's asking us to do it by quarters and years and take the months off. So if we OK, then it does it accordingly. Let's just undo that. Let's say in the exam, um, it didn't quite pick all the dates up automatically. So you can highlight using the little down pointed black arrow. When you right do a click, forward make left click, it will pick them all up automatically. And then you could do the group. It's got exactly the same information, but if these aren't ticked and you don't notice, you may not be doing the way you want to. Okay, so you can see that that one's worked. With regard to the filter to hide selected items, if we want to hide um, the east, We'd right click, there's the filter, so we're looking for the same language, right click and filter. And we're going to hide selected items, so it's all hidden, we can't see it. And then if we do it to the west as well, so filter, hide selected items, so now you can just see the data that you need to see. And remember, just as a quick one, if they ask you to change the data in a table, it's not the pivot table it's in here so if they asked you to change something to a data uh, for 8th of the 4th 2006 west to 16 it's this that you refresh not that okay now just be aware of that it's a simple one but people tend to take it for granted but that's what they do so that's the um week four uh sections 11 12 and 13 and the next thing i'm going to do is the weekly revision for that um, those sections and that's going to be 
the questions uh, 20 to 28. So I'll see you there if you're going to join me. Thank you.